Good to see you, my friend. Uh, it's great to see you, Warren. Hey, it's great to be here, you know. I enjoy coming out to the Comic-Con. There's a lot of uh, hot anime girls that uh, get off on touch and fur, so it's good for me. A lot of furries here, which is nice. Hello, well, I'm going to be talking out pretty much. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good to see you. Pick up the DVD if you wouldn't mind. Because I can barely afford gas money to get home, so I need the profits. I really do. Okay, so... Warren, I'm, actually, I'm surprised to see you here because uh, isn't this sort of thing beneath you? This is really more a Greg the Bunny thing. You know, I'm not a fan by. I don't know what a, a battle star is, and... Uh, so I'm a little bit confused, but, uh, you know, this is to pay the bills. And, uh, you know, the, the company says jump, and I, uh, I ask how much for me to jump. That's pretty much how it goes. That's fantastic. Well, uh, okay, so, but you were on an episode, an old episode of Doctor Who, back the British one. Uh, yes, I was inside a Dalek, what do they call A Dalek. I was inside a Dalek, and I would just kind of ride around in there, and then I'd hit a switch and say exterminate a lot, and... Uh, <laughs> Good times, good times. That was BBC. I love working with the BBC. Yeah, um, I've, I've heard rumors of uh, your early days working with like Peter O'Toole, Oliver Reed. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, those were good days. You know, I would love to write a memoir, um, except I uh, <clears throat> was pretty drunk off my ass for most of it. A lot of blackouts. I remember Peter O'Toole taking a swing at a barmaid one time, and uh, I remember being in a threesome with uh, Mikey Kane and myself and Peter Ustinov. That was a sweaty sandwich, I'll tell you. But uh, most of it's uh, most of it's really left me, unfortunately. Uh, if those bed springs could talk, though, they'd whimper sa softly and cry. Okay. So, do, do you prefer uh, which? Do you prefer television or the theater? Uh, I'm a child of the theater. I really think there's nothing like um, the personal relationship that one has with one's audience. Um, and especially, it's like you can lock the doors and really have a captive audience uh, to avoid walkouts. You know, on television, somebody can change the channel. But in theater, especially if it's raining, there's much more uh, possibility of your audience, you know, sort of staying with you. Uh, but television has been kind to me. I've uh, managed to do this insipid little Muppet show for, uh, for the Independent Film Channel and for a brief time on Fox. Um, so, you know, I can't really complain because it's been paying my alimony. How is it working with the same cast of characters for the last uh, many years? Is that? Oh, we've had our ups and downs. Uh, some of them got like Count Blah underwent some uh, major physical transformations. You know, uh, there's a lot of um, uh, body mani manipulation. Uh, puppets go into the knife a lot, change their appearances every once in a while, every few years. Just some stitching to kind of keep everything together. But I like working with the gang, you know, um, Count Blah, he's a good actor, I respect him, he's been in the business many years, he used to do the old horror Hammer films, uh, Ed Wood type stuff. Um, Greg the Bunny I really have very little respect for because he's had no professional training whatsoever. Uh, he gets by on acting like an idiot, you know, he blows his lines and they say, oh good print, you know, oh brilliant Greg, that was wonderful, let's, uh, you know, let's use that, that's a keeper. And, uh, you know, with me, I could rehearse all day and they're asking me to do it again. You know, can you do it again, Warren, and be funnier? Where uh, Greg the Bunny just says, you know, he shows up late and he just bumps into something and they say, oh, brilliant, it's a keeper. Ridiculous. The French probably love him. Uh, well, what's been your favorite role to play uh, so far in doing these movie parodies? One of my favorite roles? Yes. Uh, well, I, I enjoy performing in my own plays. Uh, I did one called uh, The Succubus, and uh, I did another called Postcards from the Shitstorm. That's probably one of my most popular. Uh, and I always play an extension of myself. Uh, I also enjoy Shakespeare. I do a mean Iago. Yeah, really bad, really, 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 really angry. And, um, hmm, that's a very good question, though. How do you Some choose your roles? Uh, well, I have a very uh, rough screening process where my agent basically tells me what's available and uh, if my, uh, <clears throat> I don't have uh, Gamblers Anonymous that day, I just show up and they pay. I choose my roles based upon what pays, frankly. I'll do just about anything these days. But it used to be that I looked for something that just had a, a great deal of humanity, which is ironic being an ape. But uh, I really enjoy roles that, uh, that are grounded and that have some pathos and passion. 
I haven't found any yet. Uh, your helmet, is there any uh, activities you ah. take it off? Uh, no, I don't remove the helmet, not even whilst showering. Uh, the helmet is very much a part of me uh, and an expression of my own self. And I like the mystery. I love that people go, ooh, Warren, why do you wear the helmet? And I say, glad you asked. Now, it's, it's an icebreaker. It starts a conversation. And uh, after a few drinks, you know, we go to the hotel room and, you know, I let you try to peek underneath. That's how it, that's how it goes. But I don't, uh, I don't ever remove it. Is it from your athletic days or uh, is it to keep you from hurting yourself? I did play a good deal of cricket in my youth. I was uh, quite good with a cricket bat, both on and off the field. Uh, but uh, no, mostly I just keep it on because uh, I like to accessorize. Actors enjoy props. They call it business. It's good business if you can have a little something to work with. So the helmet is, uh, adds to my mystery and it also helps set me aside in auditions. You know, you go to something, uh, Dunstan checks in or uh, Ed, the baseball chimp movie. And you go there and there's like 10 other chimps sitting there and they go, ooh, the one with the helmet, he looks interesting. You know, it was that or a diaper. Is it tough for rapes in this business? Oh yeah, terrible, terrible. You're always being typecast, you know. They're always like, oh, do you fling your own poop? And uh, yeah, it's really hard. Do you know sign language? You know, stuff like that. And uh, for me, you know, I just, I, again, I'm looking for roles that are, uh, for a lack of better word, have human appeal. And it's hard to find that, you know. King Kong, he climbs a tower, he, you know, he falls down, dies, boring, not too good. Plus, see, I don't really do a lot of stunt work. And T-Rexes have sharp teeth, so I didn't want to do that. Well, can you give us a little dirt uh, behind the scenes at Greg the Bunny? I know there must be some, uh, you know, some arguments, some... Well, there is a lot of dirt behind the scenes of Greg the Bunny, uh, but it's mostly all about me. <laughs> yeah, um, don't lead the most clandestine lifestyle. That's probably no secret. And uh, it's also no secret that I don't get along with Greg. I think he's a moron. And the guys seem to try to exploit that at every opportunity because they think it's comedy gold. Um, you know, but apparently Frank Sinatra hated Sammy Davis and uh, apparently, um, you know, all the, all the great comedy teams wanted to take each other's heads off. So I guess you need that kind of energy you know, to make, a, to make chemistry work. Um, but yeah, it's true. It's not a happy place to be. And the place stinks. Every shot you're looking at, you guarantee that Greg smells like B.O. and pudding. Yes, and what do you smell like? Me? I smell like uh, <clears throat> Brute and uh, just a hint of uh, steak sandwich. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing anybody? Uh, no, at this time I am, uh, I'm not seeing anyone, you know, I'm still technically married. I've been uh, going through a divorce with my wife Maggie uh, for the last 25 years. It's been a very on-again, off-again kind of thing. It cost me a lot of money. Uh, what can I say? We have a, a real debased passion and every time it seems like we're going to break up we find ourselves, you know, bumping uglies in a broom closet. <clears throat> so it's been difficult. Uh, but you know, whenever I can find a little starlet that I can I can have to myself, I have a little fun, and I like the professional ladies. Uh, damn shame of what happened to Heidi Fleiss. Real damn shame. Really screwed up a lot of us. Uh, me and Tom Sizemore used to sit there thinking, where are we going to get our pussy from now? And it, was, it was difficult. But uh, you find ways to bounce back. Okay, Warren. <laughs> thank you, Damon. It was a huge pleasure to meet you. I've been fan of yours for absolutely Well, thank you so much. Absolutely my pleasure. It was very good to see you. Uh, where is this appearing exactly? Is this going to be on PBS or uh, BBC One? Uh, Probot News. Probotproductions.com. Maybe you're familiar with the website. Probot uh, News. What you like toys? Toys. What, you mean like uh, sexual stuff? I got, a, I got a few things. I got a collectible uh, Hello Kitty dildo. It's a Japanese import. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, sounds good, kid. Good luck with it. Best of luck. Hey, best of luck. Well, thanks, Elite. Thanks again. For Thank you. Out. Thank you. <laughs>